Hello, I'm Dr. Craig Stern of Pro Pharma Pharmaceutical Consultants. We've spoken about specialty drugs, those expensive injectable drugs, and some of them even now that are coming out as oral drugs, especially for chemotherapy, cancer chemotherapy. Um, but I want to try and, and bring something into a real focus so that we all understand uh, something very important. And I realized that after I talked about it that while I kind of touched on it, I didn't really uh, get into it. So let me address this whole issue of specialty drugs from the following standpoint. There are some new drugs that have come out for diseases for which there have been no therapies in the past. So it's the very first time somebody can treat that, that disease. Or it's the uh, a new therapy and there hasn't been any therapy for years, not terribly effective, and now we finally have a, a, a therapy. That particular therapy is important. It isn't going to be modified. There aren't a lot of alternatives. Effectively, that particular therapy is important because it can help somebody who in the past has had nothing else that could help them. Secondly, there's a group of medications that are now being used that treat cancer or rheumatoid arthritis or blood problems, etc. And those are therapies that are, are getting into mainstream. They're going chronic where we're treating chronic disease and making some diseases that were pretty catastrophic a few years ago into chronic therapy uh, and treat them the same way as you would hypertension or high blood pressure, diabetes, things like that. Two separate uh, categories of agents. And I'm being very broad, I'm being very simplistic, but it's important that we address this. And that is, in the case of those agents that are for very specific diseases, for which there hasn't been any treatment before, if we're going to approach that, then whether it's a health plan or a, a, a pharmacy benefit manager or a specialty pharmaceutical a pharmacy or whatever, bottom line is, is that these agents are going to be given to the patient no matter what. They could cost whatever, but some way or another, a patient is going to find a way to do it, whether it's through charity, whether it's through payment, whether it's through some sort of insurance or whatever. But they're going to be paid for. So the main issue that plans and HR uh, people and, and uh, providers have is this, and that is, does the patient have the appropriate diagnosis? Is uh, the dose appropriate for whatever the uh, patient's condition is and the patient's size and however it's been labeled in order to be used? And is it being used in the appropriate duration that is uh, labeled as to how we can give it? Because if we give it for more or less, then effectively we move outside of the a realm of where we know how the drug will work and uh, what the overall risks are. And we certainly don't want to uh, violate the risks. In the second category, we deal with a group of drugs for which there are alternatives. So some of those drugs may be used, maybe another alternative may be used, maybe even a conventional therapy uh, may be used. And there are multiple studies going on now, even in the areas of uh, arthritis, et cetera, as to whether the newer agents are in fact better than the conventional agents just because they're new or they better. And that's the argument that people are trying to address. Well, in that particular category, when you review these agents, then the problem becomes, okay, not only do you want to check to see is it being used in the right patient for the right diagnosis, with the right dose, with the right duration, but now you're asking the question also, how do I address uh, the cost? How do I address it? Because now I have comparative benefits and comparative risks that I have to, to address. Here is where the vast majority of the work is going to be done, where health plans are going to be involved. There's certainly going to be conflict. There's certainly going to be questions about, are we using it right? Are we not using it right? What's the cost effectiveness of this thing, et cetera? And in a later talk, we'll talk about what's cost effectiveness, what are issues with regard to um, how we judge that, things like that. But my bottom line here and the bottom line question here is, is that, we're not just dealing with this monolith that everything is the same. We've got some where a patient needs it, they're going to get it, and they have nothing else. And whatever the cost is, there's going to have to be some way to determine how to give it to them. On the other side, there's going to be drugs that uh, necessarily there are alternatives, there are options, and now everybody's going to be looking at the options to do that. Those two distinctions are critical and will be important to us as we look at this subject from multiple other directions. 
Thank you so much for spending time with me. Have a wonderful day.